All right, so another a little bit more of a serious topic today. So if you guys haven't been paying attention in the news for the past week or so, there's been some information coming forward about Asia Argento and her what now seems like a very predatory relationship with actor Jimmy Bennett. Now, if her name sounds familiar, she's actually one of the original people and one of the, the main proponents of people that came forward against Harvey Weinstein. And that's one of the things I do want to touch on. But first, I'm just going to give you guys like a little brief overview of the situation that's happening now. There are people who can break it down a hell of a lot better like Philip DeFranco, uh, just news outlets in general. But the general information that's coming out right now is that information was leaked that she had paid Jimmy Bennett $380,000 to keep quiet about an alleged affair that they had when she was 37 and he was 17. The encounter was reported to have happened back in 2013 in a hotel room in California where the age of consent is 18. Now, while information is continuing to come out, there has been a bunch of like alleged leaked text messages that at least confirm that something happened, if they're real. Photos leaked by TMZ that has her in a state where it looks like she's not wearing a shirt with him also topless in bed matching with the timeline of when he says the assault happened. And while the two did have a close relationship, he's saying he was traumatized by the incident, doesn't know how to process it, and he's just overall feeling the weight of those repercussions. Now she is trying to deny a lot of the, the details and I'm sure we'll continue to get more information as time goes forward. He has since come out with a statement saying that he felt like he couldn't go for legal repercussions because he was afraid of how uh, society would take it because it, it's pretty commonplace that when it comes to teenage males with women, people seem to take it a lot less seriously, especially where he was 17 and he just didn't feel comfortable coming forward. Now for me, this is kind of a particularly severe case because they've known each other since he was seven. And if they had kept in contact really frequently over the years, it almost seems like it could have been a, a grooming situation. Now there's a lot more details into the story than that. Um, I just wanted to give you guys kind of a brief overview of what was happening before I kind of get into what I want to turn this into. Now, there's two main things coming out of this. And one is yes, the expected uh, outcry of people saying that, oh, he was 17 year old guy, almost 18, you know, 37 year old, you know, beautiful woman, you know, want to, well, I don't see the problem. I'd be all for that. And you might think that that's a ridiculous thing that's being put forward, but I will direct you to this young Turks video right here. If you asked 117 year olds, either when they're 17 or later when they're 37, would you have wanted to have this happen to you? You're specifically talking about males. I'm talking about males, mm -hmm. okay? I'm guessing, my guess is 85% of males would say that would be a great thing, not a bad thing, okay? Now that doesn't make it right, I'm just, and I'm guessing as to what the number is and you can guess as to what the number is. We all, relatively speaking, acknowledge that most 17 year old males in that position would be thrilled. And maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm totally wrong and no, they would be horrible. Like, oh, you're gonna give me oral sex and you're beautiful and you're gonna have, to have sex with me. I don't want it. I don't want it under any circumstance, maybe. So yeah, that guy's a piece of shit. Unfortunately, we do live in a society where uh, it's kind of frequent in media. Uh, it would build up relationships with like, you know, teenage guys and these older attractive women. And obviously there's the MILF movement and all that kind of stuff, which is, you know, it, it can be dealt with in a lighthearted way, but in reality, it's kind it's it's still statutory rape. And then in a lot of cases, it's just flat out rape and grooming. And then in the reverse, if it's a teenage girl, uh, everybody sees it as this very, very gross thing. But then oftentimes in media, it's kind of portrayed as this like romantic older man thing and that, and that women should be seeking out older men and they're more mature and there's something romantic about it. Like there's, there's tons of like current media, like Pretty Little Liars that did really similar things. And, and even if it's from the outside looking in, when these cases actually happen, people are way more likely to be like, what a friggin' pervert trying to date a high school girl, that's disgusting. But then at the same time, telling younger girls that it's, it's a good thing to look up to, to older men and try to find uh, older, more mature, sophisticated men. So that's one of the double standards I do really wanna talk about. It is gross no matter what. Like a 37 year old has nothing in common with a 17 year old. I don't have anything in common with a 17 year old. Like that is a child and you're an adult. There's no way that you can have that kind of connection in a way that, that would be meaningful and not predatory. And that goes for men and women. So I am kind of like grossed out by the people that, that and it happens a lot. It happens a lot when you, when you have like these cases where there's like teachers who get arrested for having sex with their, their male students. You get all these people being like, huh, wish I was that guy. It's like, no, you don't. Maybe you have this ideal in your head of what that situation would be and what the implications would be and how like, you know, sexy it might be to you and hot. 
but it's, it's really fucked up. It's grooming and it's predatory. It's gross. Then we have the other issue that is people trying to discredit what she said about Harvey Weinstein. Now, obviously it, it does suck to have somebody who's kind of a big proponent in that movement also be a perpetrator, but it's really important to remember that you can both be a victim and a perpetrator. There's no rules that say that one suddenly negates the other. So in my opinion, she should 100% be believed as a victim because there is evidence of her being a victim and admittance of her being a victim. But she could have still been involved in this situation too and still committed the crime as well. All this really does is hurt her integrity. It doesn't change the fact that she was a victim. It doesn't change the fact that what happened. It doesn't change the fact that we should still be judging Harvey Weinstein. It doesn't take away from his guilt. It just adds guilt to her. There's, you kind of have to look at them as separate situations. And I don't mean that in a way to be like, oh yeah, we'll just ignore that she did all this stuff and be really nice to her because of the Harvey Weinstein thing. I just mean that like her testimony against Harvey Weinstein should not be discredited because of what she did in this situation. This situation should be dealt with separately and that boy should be able to reach some kind of peace with that situation where he feels like justice is being served. And they should 100% continue looking into that situation and get down to the honest truth of what happened there. But if she admits that something sexual happens and the age of consent is 17, regardless of what the circumstances leading into it were, it was statutory rape. Now, one thing that is kind of bothering me is that people seem hesitant to call her out on her actions as well. People seem to be more willing to wait for more evidence to come forward than they might if it was a male being accused of the same thing. I'm usually in the middle camp. I, I like to lean towards um, if there's enough valid information, I believe the victim first, and then we just wait for more information to come out to find out the nitty gritty details of the situation or just kind of like get down to the bottom of the situation. But other people, because it's a woman being accused, they're more willing to like give her more rope. And I think that's wrong. I think that you should pretty much react to these situations the same way you do regardless of the gender. But I guess we'll just kind of have to see where the situation goes. I do wish we lived in a society where men felt more comfortable coming forward about things that have happened to them, where they didn't feel like they were gonna be made fun of or put in positions where they should feel like they should have been okay and even proud of the things that happened to them. And I think that's why having these discussions is so important. So again, I know I didn't give you like the full background situation on what happened, but there are other people who have broken it down really, really well. I'll try to put some of those links down below. So let me know what you guys think. Try to keep it civil in the comment section down below, but thank you all so much for watching. Have a fantastic day and we'll catch you all later.